Hey YouTube. So today I'm still cutting boards to make molding out of. That's everything from here over. There's a couple of one by twos there that I will probably just put in the in my uh, lumber storage for you know future use. But I've got these four by fours and some two bys, and I, I came down on the pile pretty far. But I had a layer of 2 by material, that's a piece of 2 inch hickory you see there. And then on the sawmill I have some red oak that's 2 inch boards that I want to make spindles out of. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to resaw this 2 into 2 by 2s and then I'll just stack them in the greenhouse so that I, when I'm ready for spindles I have them.
couple pieces of hickory here. But I'll be able to pick them out easy because hickory has a pretty distinctive look to itself. So that won't be too hard to separate them. Now here's the thing. I didn't count recently how many spindles I'm going to need, but I know I need a load of them. So um, when I was cutting with the bandsaw with LT15, when I was cutting with it, and I would come across two inch boards that could be pretty much clear with no knots or anything. Sorry about that guys. When I was cutting with no knots or anything in them, what I would do is I would take that wood, cut it two inches thick, and then set it to the side. And you can see how nice and clear this one is. That's red oak. This is red oak. They're beautiful. This is hickory. This is red oak here. So um, these are approximately nine foot long, eight foot, or no, not nine, they're about eight foot three. And what I'll do is, because they stayed so nice and straight, because they're straight grain pretty much, I'll be cutting these later on into 30 inch pieces. For now, though, I just want to stack the red oak in the greenhouse. Now that one's a little rough, but I can still use, there's still one on the bottom here. Here's another good one. Yeah, you can see how clear most of them are. This is hickory, hickory. And then, yeah, so this is all red oak that I'm setting over here. And like I say, you can see how beautiful they are. So they're, that's what you would call rough cut spindles, you know, on the sawmill. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's thirty-nine spindles, roughly, out of just that. Now, there's no, um, there's a, there's a little bit of hickory in the. If you look over here, there's a little bit of hickory, but there's some. I think uh, this next couple one by or hickory over there, two layers of one by that's hickory. I don't really want to go through the aggravation of planting them, but I will anyhow. But over in here now, these two inch boards that you're seeing are in four by fours. Uh, the four by fours I can use for a newel post somewhere if I need them. I'm not sure I'm going to need them. I'm, I just wanted to make some. Uh, the two inch boards though that are there, they can definitely be cut into spindles and really I should do that because what's happening to my system here is I've got these nice one by uh, red oak for uh, that I'm going to be using for molding and I'm being you know ganged up on with these two inch boards so I'm going to put them on the sawmill and I'm going to cut them down to two inches two by twos or thereabouts just so I can have I, it'll give me an idea of how many spindles I have. So what you're looking at there, those are two by fours. So I'm just going to split them in half to make two by twos out of them. And uh, keep in mind this is rough cut. And when I say rough cut, I'm sort of talking about two things. Rough cut that they're coming off the sawmill. Rough cut that they're not to the dimension that I actually want them to be because they got to go through the planer. But for now, I just want to get as many of them cut. And like I say, you can see how nice and straight they are. I want to get as many of them cut and stacked in the greenhouse as I can.
Alright, so I have some more 2x4s over there on my uh, pile. The problem with it is that they're down on the bottom there a little bit and moving this wood around, I don't mind moving it like you know, one at a time while I'm planing, but trying to dig through the pile is the hard part. Now there are three 2x6s there on this side over here that I'm going to grab and put them on and then I'll cut them into spindle so I'll get three or two cuts out of one board that'll give me three spindles eight footers so three six nine spindles and then three times that will give you 27 spindles out of those so this is working nice guys one of the things I um, had gotten some uh, questions on this and um, I just want to answer this the best way I can if you're not an experienced woodworker, and I think that's probably why you're watching the videos, maybe to learn something, and um, because I myself, I don't watch very many carpentry videos, if, I, if any at all, because I, I don't need to. Um, when it comes to boards, like if you, if you look at these boards that are on here, every time you do something uh, with, the, with wood from the log down, like if you look at these, you'll see there's a bend at the end and stuff like that. One's a little narrower than the other. And there's, one's a little higher than the other. You worry about that when the wood is going to its final resting place. So in other words, what I'm saying is right now, these are just, to me, and same with those, this, these are spindle blanks. That's what I would call them. In other words, they're just rough cut. They might be two by two, they might be inch and three quarter by two, they might be inch and three quarter by inch and three quarter. It doesn't matter, just so they're bigger than inch and a half, that, which is probably what they're gonna end up as. So as long as they're bigger than that, it doesn't matter whether they're bent, whether there's a bow, whether there's a kink in them, because like all these boards are not resting down on the bunk. But I'm, I can't take the time to fix that because it'd be wasting my time. Because you can see that in about 10 minutes or less, I cut all those spindles, and I'm gonna cut a bunch of spindles out of here in the next five minutes. So it's not gonna take long to do it. But I get a lot of comments, um, you know, like one of the comments I think was something about if you put a crooked wood piece of wood through the planer, you know, like how does that work out? Um, there's techniques for handling the equipment, so I'm not going to go into that at the moment, but what, what I'm going to say is, if a board is bigger than you need lengthwise, not just lengthwise, but widthwise and thickness, if it's bigger than what you need and you have the tools that I have, and, you know, more, guys have more than this, then there's no reason why you can't take boards and make them into what you want, okay? That's the purpose of having the tools. It's when you don't have tools that you need to come up with some uh, clever ways of making the boards do what you want them to do. Now, you know, in molding, I have a lot of molding that is not perfectly straight. I mean, some of the molding, you know, might have a long sweeping bend to it, like a, a long bow. Some of it have maybe a short kink and then straight. And it all has to do with the knots and grain in the wood. But the thing about it is that um, there are certain things like a long bow, for instance, in a piece of molding. As you're nailing it, you can adjust that. And, you, and, and a, a carpenter knows where to nail that to be able to make his adjustments. Now, believe me, there's some wood that no matter what you try to do to adjust it, you just can't use it for, for its intended purpose. So like if I have an eight foot piece of molding and I can't bend it to be a straight piece on a door, you know, because it's got a bow in it, then I'll just use that for a window unless it's, you know, as long as I can get a piece out of it that I can work with. Now sometimes even short pieces, especially red oak, because red oak is tough stuff, you know, it has a bow in it, you cannot get the bow out of it. It just, you know, so no matter if you cut 45s on that and try and fit that into a window, it may or may not work. It all depends on whether you're able to move it or not. That's why molding, making molding thinner uh, helps you to be able to move the wood. Um, and the shape of it, like a, a more square piece of wood will bend easier than a flat board will. 
you know, in, in, a, in, in a certain direction, in the wide direction. So that's why, you know, when you do carpentry work, you'll learn that. And it's not just carpentry, it's in everything you do. I mean, I do, I do a lot of metal work, and it's the same thing with metal. You know, you can bend metal, you can bring it back from being bent, and it's the same thing with wood. Once you got the hang of it and you understand what wood does and you understand the, uh, what your tools can do, then you'll realize what all you can fix and what you can't fix. Okay, so i got to get back to work. I just want to cut these in two-inch boards, two-by-twos if I can. Most of those boards I threw off of there are actually pretty nice. Some of them are got some twists in them and stuff. And sometimes this hardwood, when you have a knot, there's no, there's the moisture level in a knot is a lot less than it is in the regular board. So sometimes you'll have the board um, actually, like say you have a six inch rough cut board, you dry it and you find out that it's down to five and three quarters. But where the knot is, it may still be six inches or, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch off. So you'll be coming down the board and all of a sudden you'll have a hump in it. You need to be able to work with stuff like that. You know, and this is after you dry, dry it. You don't see this when you're cutting it on the sawmill. You see it after it's been dried. Like you can, t I don't know if you can uh, see over here. Um, let me just point a couple things out here to you. Like, you can see this one board here, I think I'm pointing at it has, that was one that had a really bad saw cut to it. It's got all kind of waves in it. But, the bottom of it that I just cut is straight because I cut it on the wood miser. So I can run that through a planer yet, probably up to this point somewhere, and still get spindles out of that. So you want to watch what you scrap. 
I mean, real thin stuff, I scrap that within a heartbeat. But, you know, if the wood, like I said before, is bigger than the piece you need thickness-wise, hang on to it because you can run that through a planer and possibly make that wood turn back into what you want it to be. It all depends on, you know, how much you're willing to put into it and the tools that you have. Okay, to add to that conversation then, if you look down there, you can see that the second two boards are fairly straight. It's this first one that's really crooked, okay? So it has a big bow in it. Now, a bow like that shouldn't scare you as far as, um, you know, if you're going to be cutting it into pieces, and I am spindles. Now, if I was going to use that as an eight-footer somewhere, like to hold something up, that thing's not the one, you know, you want something else. But nonetheless, like I say, if it's bigger, if in, if in its rough form, it's bigger than what you're going to need for the, for the uh, finishing touches, then by all means hang on to it until you're ready to, you know, do the finish work and then you can do whatever you have to do. So anyway, that's two by fours. I'm going to cut them in half this direction and then that'll give me um, six more spindles. And you can see I did dig them out of the pile over there. There are four, there's actually three 4 by 4s and one Hickory 3x3 three three in there. Uh, the Hickory 3x3, three three, I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with that thing, but you never know. Uh, the rest of it is for molding then. But I'll stack them in the greenhouse and see how they, how they do. To, because like I say, I could use newel posts here and there. So this is a form of resawing. Uh, you know, I resaw another whole separate animal if you're talking about the tool. I have no need for it. I was watching a video at lunchtime. It's a little after lunch. I was watching a video at lunchtime of a guy how to cut a board straight from a bowed board. You know, by the time he made the jig to make the saw be able to cut a straight board, I could have snapped the line and cut it with a circular saw just as easily. So there's a lot of ways to do things. time at all, I probably have enough spindles here in their rough form to do the whole upstairs uh, balcony in the house. So that's, that's why I'm just going to stack these in the green because I'm not ready to do that. So there's no sense in me, you know, going through a lot of trouble just to um, well, do the milling to it now. So I'll just store them and then do the milling later. Guys, what I was saying about boards, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a knot right here. And if you look at that board, you'll see it's narrow now and all of a sudden by the knot, it's wider and then it narrows out again. That's not because the wood miser cut it like that. That's because that board shrunk like that. If you notice, the bottom of the board is on all of the bunk rails. So the board is straight, but because where the knot is, it didn't shrink as much, you have a little bump in there. So that's not going to bother me because I'm going to come down two inches, and even if that's a quarter of an inch high there, it'll be okay. I'm going to cut two inch spindles out of that. And I know that it's hickory and, I'm, and red oak is what I'm after, but if I have enough hickory spindles, I may use like maybe every tenth one be hickory or you know maybe one at each end of a run. So I don't know yet what I'm going to do but all I know is that I can't use the hickory in a 2x8 for, for my use. Um, maybe some, maybe I could use it for some legs 
but you know not the two by eight but different boards out of it so I'm just going to cut them in the spindles for myself make it easier for me to handle and it's not going to be so hard by the time I get it uh, into the greenhouse because it'll kill me moving all these bigger boards That's about all I'm going to need the sawmill for today. So I'm going to go back to planing. I've gotten pretty far with the wood that's in there. I'll just show you this. I've got some beautiful 14 inch wide red oak boards. Look at those. They're beautiful. It's a little check down at that end, but man, you can make end tables, small end tables or small side accent tables out of that with just one board, you know, for the top. So I want to hang on to those. That's why they're sitting here. I'm not sure where I want to put them yet. You know, even separating the wood and planing it down and all, I'm still running out of space, no matter how I look at this. <sighs> okay, so, like I say, I'm going to go back to planing these boards. 110, 12, 14, 116 in there. That's about 88 outside. Now besides those two inch hickory boards that you saw me get out of there, I just uh, planed some of these. Now some of them were a little rough, but I got to tell you the hickory is a beautiful wood and it has a distinctive smell. Even though it looks like cedar, the smell of it is very distinctive to itself. You can smell hickory even when somebody's burning it in their stove. But this will make some nice looking furniture tops. So there's a couple pieces here of hickory that I'll keep separated. I had to plane this one here. Hold on a second. <clears throat> I had to plane this one here down to half an inch. It was three quarters when it came off the mill. 
and it was uh, pretty had some waves in it. I'll have to show you how you get some of them waves out of there so you end up with a regular thickness board. But hickory is nice looking. Make some nice furniture or some interesting pieces for something. Okay, so now we're out of that. So now I'm down to the red oak again. So now I'll just be what I'm going to call production planing as much as I can. Keep going. We're down a good two feet from where we started this morning. Whew. Putting this away is just as much a chore as it is cutting it. Hey, YouTube, I know that um, uh, it's hard for me to plane and explain anything at the same time because of the noise that the planer's making. And I'm not into this editing too well, and I'm not going to get into it. It'll take too much out of my day. But let me just show you something here. With it. You see how the cutter edge, the uh, edge, it's not a cutter, but the edge of the planer is about equal distance away from the wood. If I go down there, there's a very slight difference. Now that means that this board, for all intents and purposes, is not cupped. This is a piece of red oak. So when I put the, pl the board into the planer, that's the first thing I look for to see if the board is cupped. If this edge hits here and here, I turn the board over right away. So it's not just a matter of me doing one board after the other without doing any thinking. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background here that I haven't explained. So um, anyway, getting back to this particular board, because it's so straight across there at this point, this is right at the entering the board in, I'm going to take a light cut on this and see if a sixteenth of an inch, and that's a half a turn on this, and see if it hits the whole board. If it, if it comes very close to planing the whole board, I'll take another sixteenth, then I'll turn it over on the opposite side. What I've been saving here, just so you know, if I plane a one inch board and I don't get a nice surface like this at three quarters of an inch because of cupping or whatever, that's molding wood. Something like this that's been planed all the way down, even though there's knots in it, something like this that has um, been planed all the way and it's still a full three quarters thick, that's what I call premium lumber. I put that on my pile for, you know, special occasions we might say. So the, I am sorting this as I go. Now I can't really sort it on the table or on the horses here because I don't have enough room. But you'll see what I'm talking about. Like just like this one by four, for instance. It's been planed all the way down. It's three quarters of an inch thick. There's no way I'm making molding out of that. I mean, if I need to in the end, yes. But that's going on the special pile. All right, the same thing with any board that's three quarters thick. It doesn't matter if the edge is like this one a little bit wavy because that's what joiners are for. But the point is is that if it's planed itself all the way down, okay, it's three quarters of an inch thick yet, that's specialty pile. If it's um, less than that or if it hasn't planed itself and it's still at three quarters because of cupping or whatever, that's where I make molding out of it. So anyway, back to this board. Okay, so I'm going to plane this board one time, and we'll see what it looks like after I plane it once. I'm going to do it a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so now I just took this blade, or yeah, board, out of the planer. It has, it's been planed once, and it's planed thoroughly from one end to the other. Regardless of that knot that's up there towards the end, I don't care about that. As far as I'm concerned, this is, has the makings. A, of a premium board. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip it over. I'm also going to check the thickness of it to see how much I have to take off. So with my handy dandy, you can see um, I got about a sixteenth or a little bit better. So if the opposite side planes thoroughly at a sixteenth, uh, that'll make a three quarter inch board. That'll be going on my specialty pile. Now there comes a point where, you know, if you have a whole lot of nice boards, and, the fir and this morning when I first started cutting, the, the red oak was unbelievable. The first 50 boards were, were beautiful. They didn't even have a knot in them. But after that, not 50 boards, 25 boards. And then after that, you know, you start getting some marks in them. But regardless, what I'm going to do here now is run that through again on the opposite side. 
and then we'll see what that looks like. Now I don't know if you can see it, but from here down, it did not get planed. That was with a sixteenth of an inch cut. Now again, you know, you take out the handy dandy, and I've still got a little bit there that I can go to three quarters. So I'm going to go down um, an eighth of an inch on this face, and then that'll be planed all the way, and I'm going to put that on my stack pile. There's another spot here that didn't plane. You know, every now and then you get some low spots, and knots seem to not uh, shrink as much as the rest of the board in a lot of cases, because there's no water in them. All right, so let me plane that, and then I'm going to put that on the stack. So that one by four then that I just put in, I took a, an eighth of an inch off the first cut because it was pretty flat when I put it against the guide over there. And then I took a sixteenth of an inch off the second cut and it's totally been planed. Now this board is so nice that to use this with, with molding at three quarters of an inch thick I would if I needed it, if I had to have it, but I've got a lot of red oak in there yet to go through. So this can go on a specialty pile, just because of how clear it is. And that it's planed at three quarters exactly. When I come up against some boards, if I do that are really warped or goofed up, I'll show them to you instead of these nice boards. They're just, I, I can't help it, they're so beautiful. Okay, so let me just show you this board. now. It was planed down in here. The board's three quarters of an inch thick at this point. And you can see it was not planed in the middle there, but it was planed down at that other end. It was also planed on the other side. This board is a perfect candidate for molding. And the reason I say that is because it was planed on this side. Now you can see it went down through the middle. It had a cup in it. But the board is fairly flat. Now it's not perfectly flat. I said fairly flat. but because it's three quarters of an inch thick and I don't want to go any thinner than that to make molding, this board, as, as good as it is, will be for molding. It's not going to go on a special pile. It's a three quarter inch board that's not planed because of the cup in it. I don't know if you realize that, but when you have a cup in a board, if the board's an inch thick and you have to take a quarter of an inch off one side, and a quarter of an inch off the other side because of cupping to get a flat board, you no longer have a three quarter inch board. It's less than that. Okay, so, and it varies sometimes because of how the board um, loses moisture, whether it's thick or thin, or sometimes it's wavy. The planer does take the waviness out for the most part, but not totally. And I'm talking on a small scale here. But anyway, this is the kind of board that, you know, is ideal for making molding. It's flat, it's not quite um, planed on one face, it's just right. Well, if I get one more sunny day, and I don't know what the weather is for tomorrow, but if it's one more sunny day, there's 14 layers there yet to do, and uh, I'll be finished with the kiln. I can hardly wait. Did a lot of planing, a lot of cutting to get what I got. Um, I've got a lot of nice stuff here that can be worked into good wood products and um, all I got to do is put it away now today. It's, I think it's around 4 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock. But anyway, I'm getting beat for today. Pretty nice day. I hope it's sunny tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.